So you are all welcome for today's lecture. We are going to discuss uh, Bernoulli's equation today, what we call a Bernoulli's theorem of fluid flow. As we all know, in our secondary schools, we are taught about the law of conservation of energy. Law of conservation of energy says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be transformed from one form into another. Now, this law is what the man, Bernoulli, actually utilized to develop a theorem for fluid flow in a pipe or in, in a channel, in a closed channel. So when a fluid flows in a pipe, there is usually uh, changes in pressure, velocity, and elevation. Now, when we have that, we could see there will be differences from point to point when there are changes in the dimensions of the channel. We consider the, uh, the pipe that is inclined as shown in this diagram here. We see that we have two points, point one and point two, whereby the diameter of point one is not the same as that of point two. And the height, because the pipe is rising up, there is a height difference between point one and point two. Also, the velocity is not the same. Obviously, that cannot be because uh, we have different size of the of the channel from point one to point two. So the diameter is also different. Now, when we have this, we can now see how the conservation of energy the law of conservation of energy can be utilized to develop a theorem that will give us how to solve our norms from one point of the channel to the other. Analyst theorem says that there are no energy losses between two different points of a channel or a pipe, like a point one and point two here, despite changes in elevation head, pressure head, and velocity between the two points. That is to say, the total energy at point one is equivalent to the total energy at point two. So the sum of energy remains constant despite the difference in the uh, difference in the uh, dimensions of the pipe. And so we want to develop a theorem that will help us to calculate different values of unknowns from point to point in a fluid flow system like we have here. Now, there are three forms of energy that we consider in this uh, flow in the pipe that we have here. Three different forms of energy. And the energy sum up to give the total energy at a point. So the total energy at, the, at a point is equivalent to the total energy at the other point from point one to point two. Now, let's look at the three energies that we can encounter in the fluid flow. One, potential energy. Potential energy is due to the elevation of the, of the pipe. And then anybody that is at a, an elevated you know, level develops uh, potential energy due to the height. This energy is given as PE, potential energy, PE. And then potential energy is equal to WZ. Z is the height at which the fluid is. W is the weight of the fluid elements, weights of fluid elements. So that is the first energy encountered. Second one is the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy possessed by the fluid due to its velocity. And that's energy we all know. When a body is moving, it possesses energy. And that energy is also true. It's, a, it's also available for fluid that is flowing in a pipe. And the energy is represented as Ke, kinetic energy, Ke. And the, by calculation, we can determine that energy by using the formula Ke equals Wv squared over 2g. Wv squared over 2g. The W is the weight of the elements. V is the velocity and G is the acceleration due to gravity. So that's the second energy. 
Now, the third energy at this point is the flow energy or pressure energy or flow work. And that represents the amount of work necessary to move uh, the elements against the pressure P. The amount of work done necessary to move the elements, the fluid elements against the pressure P. This energy is represented as Fe, flow energy, Fe. And can be determined by using the formula Fe equals omega P divided by gamma. Omega P divided by gamma. The omega is the weight of the elements, P is a pressure, and gamma is a constant. Now, these three energies can be summed up to get the total energy at any particular point in the fluid flow. So let's see the derivation, how we can derive the Bernoulli's equation using uh, all these three energy that, is in, that are encountered at the, in, in, the, in the pipe as the fluid flows. The force acting across a section of the fluid is given as F equals PE. F equals PE. Uh, you know, pressure is equal to force divided by area. Pressure is the force acting perpendicular to a, a particular area. So that force can be determined as pressure multiplied by the cross-sectional area. And that's what you have here. Force equals pressure multiplied by area. P is the pressure in that formula and A is the area of the section, the section at which the fluid is flowing. Now in moving the fluid element across a section, that force that is moving it is trying to move the elements in distance L, L along the length of the channel. So the, the, the fluid moves in distance L, which is equal to the length of the element. Therefore, the work done is given as work equals PAL. That is force times distance. And we just establish that force is equal to PA. Force multiplied by distance will give us energy or work done. Now, force multiplied by distance can be represented as PAL. Now, PAA can actually be written as PV, where V is the volume of the elements. V is the volume of the elements. So work is determined as pressure multiplied by volume. Now, the weight of the elements is W, which is equal to gamma V. As we have seen above, we can deduce that gamma V. All right? Now, gamma V can be used to determine uh, the, what work will be. Now, that gamma is a specific weight, weight of the fluid, specific weight of the fluid. Therefore, V equals omega divided by gamma. V equals omega divided by gamma. In that case, work equals pressure multiplied by volume can be represented as Pressure multiplied by weight divided by gamma. That's what we have above. Pressure multiplied by weight divided by gamma. Now, the total sum of energy possessed by the fluid elements can be written out now. The three energies can now be added. E equals Fe plus Pe plus Ke. That is, total energy is, you know, the... Uh, sum total of the three energies that we have looked at, flow energy plus, you know, potential energy plus kinetic energy, flow energy or flow work, Fe. So we can now represent the two of them by their formulas, the three of them. Now, energy will be equal to omega P divided by gamma plus omega Z plus omega V squared over 2G, measured in Newton meter. Now, at section one, the total energy can be represented using subscript one. E1 equals omega P1 over gamma, plus omega Z1, plus omega V1 squared over 2G. Now, at section two, 
we can use subscript two to represent all the various energies. E2 equals omega P2 over gamma plus omega Z2 plus omega V2 squared over 2G. Now, applying Bernoulli's theorem that energy is neither created nor destroyed, even in the free flow. So you can say if energy is not lost between point one and point two, then E1 equals E2. This implies omega P1 over gamma plus omega Z1 plus omega V1 squared over 2G equals omega P2 over gamma plus omega Z2 plus omega V2, school, V2 squared over 2G. And that implies since uh, uh, the W, uh, beg your pardon, not omega, W is common to all the three terms in each section. It can be eliminated. So we can have P1 over gamma plus Z1 plus V1 squared over 2G equals P2 over gamma plus Z2 plus V2 squared over 2G. And this is the Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation obtained from the Bernoulli's theorem. Now this equation can be utilized to determine an, an unknown from one point of a channel of a, of a pipe where a fluid is flowing to another section from point to point. So by equating the values in the se first section to the second section, the values of energies, we can determine an unknown. And that is what a Bernoulli's equation is very good at. So it can help us to determine an unknown whether pressure, whether velocity, whether height at a different section. Once we are able to determine or we, we have the information about one particular section of the channel and other parameters too. So we want to use uh, this uh, equation to actually determine the fluid flow and uh, unknown pressure in a particular fluid section using the formula that we just derived. So we're going to use that in a worked example, in a worked example now. Now in the channel, so we say in the previous figure, water at a, uh, 10 degrees C, what at 10 degrees C is flowing from section one to section two. And then at section one, which is 26 millimeter in diameter, the gauge pressure is 345 kilo Pascal. 345 kilo Pascal. And the velocity of flow is three meter per second. Now at section two, which has a 50 millimeter in diameter, and it's a two, uh, two meter above section one. Section two has 50 millimeter of diameter and two meter above section one. Then we want to determine the pressure at that section, pressure at section two. Assuming there are no energy losses in the system, calculate the pressure P2. That is pressure at section two. All right, so let's go back and see the figure once again. The figure is A. We have the pressure. P1, we have the height, uh, uh, height difference between Z1 and Z2 given. Then we have V1, the velocity at a point one. Uh, at point two, we have the velocity. We don't know the pressure. So we, we, we also know the difference in height between the two points. Now the cross-sectional area of point one and point two are also needed in calculation in this uh, solution. So let's look at the solution now. We have been given the diameter of a uh, section one and diameter of section two, which will help us to know the cross sectional area of each section. So diameter D1 is 25 millimeter. That's for section one. Then the velocity at point one is three meter per second. Then diameter D2 is 50 millimeter. Pressure at point one is 345 kilopascal gauge. Then we know the difference between uh, the, point, uh, the two points in terms of heights. Z2 minus Z1 is two, two meter. Now we wrote it Z2 minus Z1 instead uh, rather than say Z1 minus Z2. The reason because is because when you look at the figure, you see that Z2 is higher than Z1. So that value is 
greater than the value as of z1. So the this right to write it as z2 minus z1, you no, know, instead of saying z1 minus z2. If we are written it z1 minus z2, there will be a, a sign difference, and that will make the calculation to go wrong. The sign difference minus will be introduced. So it is z2 minus z1, which is two meter. Now the unknown is p2. We want to calculate p2. What is p2? So using the Bernoulli's equation, we know that P1 over gamma plus Z1 plus V1 squared over 2G equals P2 over gamma plus Z2 plus V2 squared over 2G. All right. Now with that, we can make P2, the unknown, the subject of the relation. So bring it out to this uh, other side of the equation. We have P2 over gamma equals P1 over gamma plus Z1 plus V1 squared over 2G minus z2 minus v2 squared over 2g. All right. Now, finally, you can make p2 to stand alone. p2 equals gamma into brackets, p1 over gamma plus z1 plus v1 squared over 2g minus z2 minus v2 squared over 2g, which equals uh, p1 plus gamma bracket z1 minus z2, that is collecting light terms, and then v1 squared minus v2 squared over 2g. The light terms have been combined here. They have been uh, uh, connected together and then factorized. The expression is factorized. So p2 equals p1 plus gamma into bracket z1 minus z2 plus v1 squared minus v2 squared over 2g. Now g is acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant, 9.81 meter per second squared. Gamma is the a constant related to fluid flow. At 10 degrees C, gamma equals 9.81 kilonewton per meter cube. All right. So, but uh, we do not know the value of volume for velocity at point one, velocity at point two. That can be determined if we employ what is termed continuity equation. Continuity equation has that, states that uh, A1V1 equals to A2V2, that is, the dimension, the area at a point multiplied by its velocity is equal to the area at another point multiplied by the velocity at that point. So you can employ that to determine V square, V2, based on the value of V1 that was given. So therefore, V2 is equal to V1 multiplied by A1 divided by A2. Now let's calculate A1. A1 equals pi D1 squared over 4. D1 was given as 50 millimeter. So pi d1 squared over 4 is pi times 50 squared divided by 4. And that is 1963 millimeter squared, approximately. 1963 millimeter squared. So therefore, we can determine v2 by using the formula of a continuity equation. v2 equals v1 a1 over a2, 3 times 491 divided by 163, and that gives us 0 0.75 meter per seconds. 0 0.75 meter per seconds. Therefore, we can substitute uh, all the unknowns have been, uh, the remaining unknowns is now determined in this equation. So we can substitute all the values of the parameters into this equation. So we can have that. So we can have P2 equals 345 plus 9.81 multiplied by brackets minus two. Now we have z1 minus z, z2 minus z1 is equal to two. Therefore, z1 minus z2 that we have in our equation will be minus two. And that is why we have minus two here. So 9.81 bracket minus two plus three square minus 0.75 squared divided by two times 9.81. All right, so we can see that minus two is used instead of two. We have used two, the calculation will be wrong. It is minus two because what we have in the formula is Z1 minus Z2. Whereas Z1 is lower in height you know, than Z2. Therefore, P2 equals 345 plus 9.81 minus two plus 0.43. When we finish that off, we have 345 minus 15.4. And the answer is P2 equals 329.6 kilopascal gauge. And that is a computed relative to P1. It's 
computer relative to P1. So it means uh, uh, P, P2 is less than P1 because the channel is larger, that's a larger area at point two than a point one. So the pressure obtained is 329.6 kilopascal gauge pressure because computer relative to uh, P1 which is actually also a uh, gauge pressure. So that is the example of how to utilize Bernoulli equation. Now, sometimes in a, in a problem, uh, we don't always ask for the pressure. We can ask for the velocity at the second point, for instance. Sometimes it may be the height difference. Or if one height is known, we can determine the second height at the other point. So I hope you got uh, this uh, theorem clearly. And then the examples, example that we have taken under it. So I want you to uh, please go over it again and then ask your question, type your question into the chat. Let me know what your question is so that I can respond. So thank you for joining and then thank you for uh, being attentive to the lecture. So I will expect your questions in the chats. Whatever question you have, let's have it in the chat. I will respond accordingly. So thank you very much for being there in the lecture. All right. So now, so we want to end it here. Class is ending right now. Okay.